Thank you very much. Um, also, I, I should also just you know put the plug in again. If you guys feel like you have any questions at all um, to ask us, you know, if, if anything comes to mind as we're playing any of these, feel free uh, to ask anything you want. Um, yes. Can you tell us the names of the pieces you just played? Um, actually, um, unfortunately, I. What, was the question? what were the names of the pieces? Okay. Um, unfortunately. This book is only of arrangements, and so um, other than it's a Haydn divertimento, um, unfortunately, we, we couldn't fi actually find what it was. Um, so um, we're bass players. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to like kind of we have to do a lot of digging to you know find stuff to play, but um, it's out there somewhere. Yes. Uh, I have no idea who made mine. Um, yeah, some some guy in northern Italy made it, you know, about 200 years ago. Other than that, I have no idea who made it. But my base is a modern base. It's made by Guy Cole, and his shop is based in Arlington, Texas. Yes. Yes. I noticed that your bowls are configured differently and were being gripped differently. Are there reasons for that? Yes. Yeah, do you, you want to start? Sure, off? yeah. So I play the German bow, which is an underhand grip. And it's a German bow because of the size of a frog is a lot larger than the French bow, which is what John plays. So um, it really is just based on preference, whatever a bass player wants wants to use or what they're comfortable with. So. Is there an age difference between when you play the Um. Actually, the, the German bow hold comes from a, uh, a very old school style of playing when string instruments were very new. They were gripped actually with this really sort of underhand grip, which is where the German bow comes from. Yeah, exactly. And so the French bow actually was um, developed, you know, mid 1800s um, in France and uh, actually was made popular by an Italian um, by the name of Bottasini. If you want to look him up, um, he was the one that actually made it popular as far as um, having more control over the bow, um, which is why I prefer it. But, um, <laughs> but of course, each bass player has their own preference, and um, you know, the, both grips uh, have a particular sound. Um, you know, the French bow being a little bit more refined, whereas the German bow, you know, really makes the bass move a lot. So. Um, it's just a matter of preference, what feels good to the player, and, um, yeah. yeah. Do, do both of you play other instruments as well? I like to play piano at times. Yes. Yeah. Um, before I was a bass player, I was actually a violinist. Uh, so, I, every now and then I mess around with that, and it doesn't <laughs> sound so good, but... Um, <laughs> But every now and then, you know, if I feel like really messing around with like bow technique or something, just to get another feel. Um, I also um, lately have been playing a little bit more cello, um, just to have a little bit more rounded, rounded out string pedagogical stuff. So. So you've been asking for shooting me if I may react. Sure. But sure. I was wondering how long you've both been playing and where you started your schooling. If you're originally from Portland, you came from outside the area. I, uh, I'm not from Portland. I grew up in El Paso, Texas. Um, I did my schooling also in Texas at University of North Texas and at Indiana University. Um, and yeah, I'm glad to be in Portland now. But yeah, I started the bass maybe in high school, so maybe about 10 years ago. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I first started studying music when I was like four. You know, when I was, you know, doing a lot of piano, and so um, when I first started bass, I started when I was about 14, 13 or 14. Um, uh, continued my schooling in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, where I did my uh, undergraduate studies. Then I actually ended up going to Indiana, where I met this guy uh, for for grad school. Um, and so I guess I, I've been playing since I was 14, so about 10 years. Did you for young people to discover classical music? Can you, can you know, people haven't discovered classical music, they say they don't know popular, popular music uh, recommendations to discover. Of course, becoming here would be a great 
Oh, absolutely. Because that's what we think that's going to be the case. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, for, uh, for me, when I was, um, you know, before I discovered classical music, I was actually really into jazz. And so um, that was uh, kind of my gateway into classical music and, you know, exploring a, you know, a really, um, I guess, just really expansive art form. So, yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of ties to the other genres of music too, so. Yeah, ab absolutely, Harvest, pleasure. All right, so this uh, this next piece we're about to do, um, actually we do know where it's from, <laughs> <laughs> um, is a, uh, a movement from Prokofiev's uh, Music for Children. It's uh, his fairy tale movements, the third movement of Opus 65. Thank you. developed in the 1800s, some of them actually had five strings. Um, so that allowed them actually to have a low B string, um, which for us in America is um, a little harder to play. It's not, um, it's harder to be refined with a five string bass. There's less room in between the strings. So the way we compensate is by having a longer string. So normally, if you just had a four string bass, that would be your lowest note. Now, if I open these gates all the way, I can have a low C. So, um, it's an extension of the string, and it allows us to reach the notes that a lot of composers uh, were actually going for um, when they were writing, say, for a five-string bass. So, that's basically it. It's added on. This is actually maybe a piece of wood that's only two years old. Um, so it's it's added on to the instrument. Okay. Now, without further ado, um, now we're going to play a set of uh, double bass duets written by David Anderson, which you probably have not heard of. He's a um, he's the principal bass of Louisiana Philharmonic. Um, does a lot of composition on the side um, and wrote a set of really goofy really goofy uh, bass duets um, that we really hope you'll enjoy. This first duet is called Kibbles and Kibbets. 